All right, so I talked about the follow me settings and this time I'm going to be talking specifically about some of the toolbars and equipment, things you can do with the um, My Whiteboard software. Again, this is the same software that you can use right now on your computer in, in distance learning, but you can also find it on your My View Board when you get back. This is all going to be the same. So if you start playing with it now, you get back in your classroom, have your My View Board, the software is going to look and, and feel the same. Okay, it's the same thing you have on your, your device, so your, your large screen view board. Um, this is installed just on my computer, so I'm sitting in front of my computer, have this software, the My Whiteboard software. Uh, the icon on your computer looks like this right here, the My Whiteboard software when it's installed. Um, remember that I logged in, I have the login thing here, I'm logged into my account, and this is what I see. Okay, it's a large whiteboard. I have a lot of toolbars right here. I've got this toolbar and I can move it. I can grab this and move it wherever I want, wherever I'm comfortable moving that to. And I have this uh, larger toolbar, again, that I can move around and shift to different spots. Each one of these toolbars have different options, okay? Again, this little thing here is to move the whole toolbar so I can grab that toolbar and move it. I can switch between what's called presentation and preparation mode. Right now I'm in preparation mode. This allows me to build anything or add anything to this. When I click this, I go into presentation mode. It's kind of like a full screen whiteboard. Okay. Um, now I'm back in preparation mode. Um, and that allows me to, to do stuff with it, not just present it. Um, this is a paste from clipboard. So anything in your clipboard, anything that you've uh, screenshotted, whatever, you can paste it straight from your clipboard onto your screen. There is an embedded web browser. Okay, this is different than going back out to Google Chrome. This is one that's embedded inside this software. When I click it, you'll notice what happens. It opens up my view board. Remember I had the follow me settings. I'm in my education. Those were my bookmarks. Here's my bookmarks for all those education things. I can click right here and go to, to clips. Um, and this, if you've added anything inside the clips program in my view board, will open up right there and allow you to search for clips. Okay. Um, but it's a built in web browser built right into uh, this program. And I can go to anything. So I can search on Google, um, cow, search, search images, find a cow. And what's really cool is I can just drag that right on out let me close this up and you'll notice that picture dragged right to my whiteboard i use the embedded browser i just dragged that photo from images right out onto my whiteboard because i was talking to kids about cows and i wanted them to see what one looked like and what's real cool um, with that again i use the embedded browser drag that right out here everything that has your whiteboard also has what we call an adorning menu and this is a menu that pops up that gives you all kinds of different things that you can do with anything that's on here. So you'll notice I can crop the picture. I can fit that to screen. I can remove a color. Okay. I can save it. I can copy it. Okay. Copy and move. So that'll allow me to do this little copy thing. Really cool if you um, are using money and you want the kids to move money, you can drag quarters and dimes and just have them drag it out, that little copy and move thing. Okay, um, and you'll notice I had that selected. I just turned it off right there. Uh, display order. This allows you to order it. I can mirror it and flip it. If you're showing them what mirrored images or flipping does, I can kind of work with that as well. Okay, so it gives me lots of different things. I can spin it. You can actually create a spinner out of anything. Um, one of the really cool things that I saw uh, the My View Board company do was drag an object out or a picture out and then um, put a, a spinner, like an arrow, right there and use that. They just span it right, use the spinner and use the arrow and spin it around and select different objects. So you can kind of create all these things right on your whiteboard. So there's lots of fading animation, hyperlink it. You can hyperlink it to anything, make it something the kids can come up and use the board with. So lots of different things you can do with this adorning menu. And that menu changes based on whatever's out there. When I drag other things out here, you'll see that menu kind of changes, okay? So that's your embedded browser. 
I can go back and forth to different pages. Now, what that means is right now, you'll notice right here, it says one. I only have one page, this one page of the whiteboard, but I can quickly add another page. You'll notice I now have two pages. If I click here, I added a third page. I can go from page to page. So if I'm working on, you'll notice my number changed. I'm on page one, I'm on page two, I'm on page three. If I'm working on a math thing, I can move from one thing to the next, have different pages set up to show the kids and have it all pre-set up, okay? Right here, if I click on this, this shows me my page management. I have three pages. I can delete the page or remove it. It says, do you sure you wanna delete it? I can say yes. So all of that happens from this page management thing. I can add more pages here as well. Um, but you can see that out here with the toolbars. You don't have to have that open if you don't want to. So there's multiple ways to do this, just like every other program we're working with, okay? So that's this first little menu right here and your options on that first menu. Presentation mode versus preparation mode, pasting from your clipboard, the embedded browser, moving from page to pages and adding pages. This second um, toolbar over here has tons of other things and I'm gonna talk all about them except this box. I'll talk about the box later. I have a video just on the box because it's got so much stuff. This first one here lets me actually switch between my Windows desktop and my whiteboard. So one little click right here and I'm now on my Windows desktop where you can see everything on my Windows desktop. And you'll notice that on my Windows desktop, I now have this toolbar that lets me go right back to the whiteboard here by clicking next, okay? So I can go to Windows, show something on Windows, click right here and go right back to my whiteboard on, on my whiteboard screen. Quick and easy little transition. I have this little guy right here. It lets me do wireless presentation and video conferencing, okay? And we'll probably have a video on that one later. There is screen capture. Okay, this enables me to actually capture. I can do a full screenshot. I can do a free style screenshot. I can do a um, rectangular screenshot. I can actually record, um, just like I'm doing now with Screencastify, I can have a screen recorder that'll record me as I'm going. And I can do just an audio recording of me talking. So I can do a math lesson and do an audio recording of me talking over that math lesson, or I can screen record the whole thing or just have audio. So you've got these capture things. Now, your device at school comes with a video camera. <laughs> just like you're using at home, it comes with a little camera, it can be moved around. So you can actually record your entire lesson, including yourself, just like you have me on the screen right here. Um, you can do that with the screen recorder. Um, the little rectangular shot will allow you to come and say, oh, take a picture of this, just like your screenshot, okay? So all of those are there. That's now on my clipboard, of course, and I can paste that if there were actual screenshot right on out there, okay? Um, so you can screenshot anything that you have on your screen. This, of course, just allows me to move the toolbar. I already talked about that. This is your file management. I can actually come in here and save what I'm working on. So if I wanna save that, I can save it. I can save it as, this is important. I can save it um, right here as any place, any location, and my Google Drive since it's there, okay? I can save to wherever I want um, and any kind of, um, to any location. And then I have export option. And again, where do I wanna export it to? Your Google Drive, you can select where, and you can then, um, name it and throw it in and, and save that device. Okay, you can print it and you have a QR code that you can share it, okay? That means if I use this QR code, open it up, it's gonna prepare the board, it's gonna prepare a QR code and anyone that clicks that QR code, it'll save to their device or be able to open that particular whiteboard on their device. So you have this built-in QR code that you can send out as well. So that's right there in your save options. Quick, easy save. Um, where do you want to save it to? I'm just going to save it to my desktop file name right here. It does save as a view board file. These are the files they open unless you choose the um, export. And here you can notice I can save it as a picture or a PDF. Um, really quick way to throw that in Google Classroom, any whiteboard. 
is to save it as a JPEG, um, name it, um, and then um, throw it into Google Classroom. Okay, so I, I really like that option, the export option, save it as a JPEG and throw it in there. And again, you can do that with Google Drive, select your, your device and, and what type do you want it to be, uh, a JPEG or the My View Board file, which allows you, of course, to open it, um, any one that you have saved. So you can reopen anything that you have saved there. And that's all with your save menu. You have this little hand here that allows you to move the canvas. And to really demonstrate that, I'm going to use the pin. So I'm going to select here on the pin. You'll notice if I select once, I get three color options, the black, red, and uh, blue. If I kind of double select it, I get all these different pin options. Boy, there's a lot of pins. Okay. And I can select and use any of those pins. I'm just going to show you with a basic pin here real quick and pretend that I'm doing a math problem. So I'm going to have 3x plus 4 equals 12. And I would have the kids doing the work or whatever, but I want to show you what this hand does. This is your infinite canvas. I can actually drag that that way and continue to do math, and I can drag it back and come back to this problem. It's kind of like this infinite little, little canvas that will let you um, move things from right to left and move it around. On your um, screen in the classroom, or if I had a touch screen, I can actually select. Let me see if it will let me select this here. Select that Oops, and only drag part of it. If I can get everything in here. And I can drag this around as one particular item when I select it. And that'll also let me make it larger or make it smaller on my infinite canvas. Um, this works really well on the touchscreen device because you can do that just with your fingers. I was trying to do that with a mouse. But this is your lasso, um, and this will let you surround, select, and then drag that whole object, resize it larger or smaller. And that works for anything on your infinite canvas. So like I said, there's tons of stuff that this does. It's absolutely an amazing program. So I have this infinite canvas that allows me to move the whole canvas, right or left. Or like I said, I can select something and drag it and move just that one item around and that'll let me select and select and drag anything that's on my screen okay so now back to this pen tool you'll notice i have a variety of pens i have my regular pen i have a paintbrush i have a highlighter okay where i can highlight things i have this little laser pen uh, the laser pen is pretty cool you put up stuff and then it'll uh, eventually um, disappear as i'm writing the next thing so it's kind of like forced notes um, on your touchscreen board. It disappears slowly over time. I have an AI pen. The AI pen, if you draw like I do, will let you draw something and then guess what is it. And I can say, well, this was supposed to be a tree, but I draw so bad that it didn't even guess a tree. Um, but you can see that it's trying to guess what it was I was drawing. And you can say, well, it was a tree, but... I'm going to tell the kids it's a brain, and if I select this shape right here, it'll throw that out on my board for me to demonstrate, look, there's a brain. Um, so the AI pen is supposed to identify what you're drawing, but I draw so bad that it can't even do that. But here's your AI pen, and I love that because, like I said, you can select it, draw something here, clear that off, um, try this tree again. See if it'll find it. There you go. It actually did a tree, different types of tree. Have to draw better. And I select that, and then it should throw it out on my board. And now I've got a tree that I can show the kids. So if you don't draw well, the AI pen will help you out um, unless you draw as bad as I do, and then it might not be uh, the most helpful tool, but it's kind of cool. Uh, you also have this shape pen. The shape pen will let you select a shape, and then when you draw it, throws that shape up there. It's just kind of cute. The kids like it. Um, more decorative. And you have your magic line pen that does this magic line, whatever shape you want there. And you can go back and forth between different pens. And again, I can change the pen size. Okay. 
um, and the transparency of the marker right here um, and the color. Remember I said that you can select uh, the, the follow me color. Mine was come standard there, but you can come in and change that from any board. Okay, now you've made a mess of your board. You have this eraser tool. You can erase a portion of it, just like this, erase part of it. Or you can come in and you can say, select things, lasso and erase something. You can clear all strokes, or you can say, just clear everything on the canvas off. So your eraser tool lets you do different things there with your eraser. You have the shape tool. The shape tool will let you throw out some shapes. And this is really cool if you teach math. So here's a triangle. I threw out a triangle. One of the things you probably noticed when I started drawing it out was it had measurements. I can turn those measurements on and off so kids can actually see the angle and lines. Okay. Again, I have my flip and rotation. If you're talking about those things, I can show segments. I can pull it up as a, a circle inside of there for more advanced math. Um, lots of different things I can do. I have... Uh, the transparency option, fading animation, hyperlink that shape so I can hyperlink it out to something. When I'm done with it, I can delete it. Each shape has different options. So here's my circle. And one of the best things about circle is you can show um, segments and fractions. So I can actually draw, oops, didn't mean to draw a second circle. I should have switched over to hand here for a second. I can draw this shape out. Like just this one. I draw this particular shape out. I can throw measurements up there. Um, remember that I divided it up into parts. This one has not been divided up, so I can come in and say divide that in half. It'll actually show them halves and it'll let me draw any segment out of that shape and pull it apart. So you can actually do fractional parts with circles, one of the amazing things. And like I said, you can turn on and off those different angles and measurements and things like that um, from within here and your adjourning menu, adorning menu, I'm having trouble talking today. So there's that with that shape, the circle's different. That's the only one that has the um, fractional parts. If I remember, oops, yeah, this one just does segments and um, angles, okay? Um, but the circle lets you do the fractional parts and I thought that was pretty amazing. So each adorning menu has some different things. I have text, of course, where I can throw this up. Um, this is um, the where it's supposed to see what you're writing. Let me clear this so I can show you more precisely. Um, try to write better here. And what it's supposed to do. Okay, that was just my handwriting. This one here will let you type it in. So if you don't write well, you've got your text box there. And again, remember that I can select an object and resize it, move it, do whatever I want with that object. Okay. Um, the other one, the handwriting one, is supposed to recognize your writing and convert it into, oh, there it goes, convert it into text. Again, I don't write well or draw well, so sometimes it doesn't see what I'm writing. But this is supposed to, as you write it, convert it straight into text for you. So I selected that right there. So this one set up on the board, I believe it happens automatically. That might have been a change. I remember it happening automatically, but it might be a change. Here I've got to write it. So you write what you want. And then come select this, and it converts it into text. And remember, you can select anything that's here, move it around, make it bigger, if you're talking about a particular word with the kids. So there's so many different things you can do. Um, and you have an undo or redo with different things where you can undo and redo things and move them around. So lots of different buttons here for you to play with. Get to know those toolbars. Um, like I said, there's tons of different things to play with and practice with. 
Uh, it is an amazing program, an amazing board itself. When you get back to the regular classroom and get to use it, my next video is going to be all about the magic box right here and all the different things that it can do. So my last video is going to be about the magic box, but this was about all the toolbars here, and I hope that helps you out and gets you excited about uh, the my view board.